So witty and nice, this is Aminunia, also known as the Martian Geek, and welcome back to another episode of Mega Man X. In the last episode, we turned the lights out on Spark Mandrel, and we only have two Mavericks to go. So, let's go here. This one could be a problem. They allow to launch Octopus. He has an ocean type of stage, and... This is one of those stages where most of it is actually pretty easy, but then there are certain parts that are a complete pain in the butt. And which parts those are should be immediately obvious when we get to them. He also has kind of crappy stage music in my opinion. I'm also not sure if this Seafloor sand graphics and graphic tile set looks very Mega Man at X. -ish. Hello, seahorses. You just wanted a hug, didn't you? This is also one of those stages where I often tend to forget how exactly it's arranged. And he also has some mid bosses to deal with. These submarine things. Well, they can suck you in, they can shoot those little mechanical snake things. And they can fortunately die. That, there's actually more than one of those in this stage, and that was the easier one. In fact, Launch Octopus actually has a lot of mid-bosses in his stage. They also have these fish, which suck you into themselves. And they creep me out. I'm not sure how long you have to be in the fish before you actually start getting harmed by it, but seems like it actually can be a while. Ah, here we go. Here's the second submarine. This is the obnoxious one. Get rid of it as quickly as you can if you value your life. Wow, did I get lucky there. Holy crap. It did not use its sucking move. And that is why that one is such a pain. You'll notice those spike pits there. Well, if it decides to suck you or blow you out, it is very easy to land in the spike pit and die. So once again, I pretty much just got through that easily by pure dumb luck. I'm having a lot of that lately, it seems like. Let's see, can I use that to get up here? Yeah, got some water spouts going on here. I do believe... We want to go up here, where we find yet another mid-boss. I think this one's entirely optional, though. Kind of annoying, but optional. Shoots out these sky claw things and bombs. And you can hit it there. And if I remember correctly, you actually have to destroy this to get the heart tank. Well, generally, where there are sub-bosses, there are opportunities for button mashing. Also, lag! Crashes through the open floor, the ocean floor, and leads us to another chamber. Where we find yet another mid-boss. These giant eel snake things are vulnerable on their heads and tails. They're also the only parts that can hurt you. You can actually ride on them like this. This might be the easiest way to beat them, actually. Just be careful and make sure you know where the spike pits are beside you before you fall down, because otherwise you might just end up in the spikes, and nobody wants that. It's happened to me. It's annoying that the mid-boss technically defeated it after it was already dead. But heart can't get, and that's the only item we actually have to worry about for Launch Octopus this stage. Well, I think, fortunately, other than we're done with all the difficult parts of Launch Octopus this stage, other than the boss itself, anyway. Pretty smooth from here on out. Honestly, there's not a whole lot to this stage. There's a lot of... Uh, there are a lot of sub-bosses. And there's another one of these things. 
This one I think is more time consuming to do than the other. But it's still pretty easy. Unless of course you just jump right into it like I did. Also those sound effects remind me of ground round stage from Mega Man Bait. Whoa. Well, I guess thing is, this thing is a little bit of almost a, a sub-aquatic successor to Ground Man's sub-boss. Jeez, I think the sub-bosses in this stage sometimes take more hits than the actual bosses. At least it has two places to hit it. They're basically always vulnerable, if you know how to aim well enough. I will say it doesn't seem to be as easy to ride this one as it does the first time. Okay, that got it. I think we're almost out of here. Let's see a few more of these weird gulpy fish to deal with. And it's boss time. I don't like Launch Octopus. I don't remember how annoying he is compared to um, the other three bosses in the second half of the Maverick lineup. But I remember him being... Pain. Well, in case you care to know, he's actually weak to armor. Whoa, 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 whoa. You do not want him to... You do not want to get into that... Hurricane whirlpool thing he's doing, because if he does, if you do, he'll start sucking your health. The main problem with this guy, honestly, is he with the sheer number of projectiles he spans. So I would focus on trying to get rid of those primarily and actually hitting him secondarily. But it seems like he was pretty willing to leave himself open that last time there. I think I'm not, I'm not, I'm not sure if it, uh, the distance you are from him matters when it comes to determining which projectile he shoots. Interestingly, you can actually use Blue Glinger's weapon to cut off his tentacles and stop him from doing the sucky move, but that one's really easy to dodge, at least if you have dash boots, I suppose. And that guy actually didn't end up giving me as much trouble as I'd expected. Once again, maybe I just got lucky. Like I said, with that boss battle, at least especially if you're not going for... Well, maybe even if you are going for no damage, I would focus on getting rid of his projectiles before worrying about him. And we have the Horming Torpedo. Yes, obviously that was supposed to be Homing Torpedo, but it's a typical homing missile type of weapon. And speaking of weapons, I forgot to show off Spark Mount Drill's weapon, but oh well. 35762566521852186 and with that, we only have one Maverick to go. And we will deal with him next time. So I'll see you then.